Sarah, welcome to the podcast. Hey, Kyle. Thanks for having me. Of course. Thanks for coming on. So I figured maybe we would start um, way back when, maybe let's say st start at the beginning. So what was maybe your earliest memory of participating in sports? Oh, in sports, like all together. Um, I, uh, I remember like playing like t-ball pretty early. Um, we were the ball and Barbies. Uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, I remember like, you know, we, we had the tea and um, I remember being pretty distracted. I didn't really... You know, it was pretty boring because no one could hit the ball. So that's, I think that's my earliest memory. Right. And then at some point, you probably transitioned into running. What, what point yeah. did that happen at? <laughs> so I feel like I felt found running uh, the way a lot of runners find running, where you weren't necessarily awesome at any other sport. And then you find running and you realize like, oh, this is what I was meant to do. Um, yeah. I played basketball and soccer pretty much growing up. Um, and I really didn't run consistently until high school. So, um, I really just found okay. it. I realized I kind of liked the running aspect of, uh, soccer. And, um, my dad gently suggested that maybe cross country would be something I'd be interested in, in high school. Okay. So cross country actually started for you in high school. Yes. Which is honestly pretty typical okay. for most runners. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, so a lot of former soccer players, um, you know, a lot of people who are completely new to the sport. I did like some, you know, running kind of like track programs, like over the summer in middle school. And like, I did like our annual cross country meet and stuff like that. But yeah, I did not start running consistently until the summer before my freshman year. Wow. So, so take me back to that, that summer before your freshman year, where you actually started to, to get a little bit more serious about it. Like what, yeah. what was it like at that point for you? Um, you know, I, I, this is something that like, I very much appreciate my dad for doing. Um, so a lot of people in my family and I like, have done cross country, like my cousins, my aunts and uncles, um, my dad, my mom and my yeah. dad, even my grandpa which I didn't really know. Um, <laughs> but uh, he kind of suggested like, it would be good for me to start running over the summer. Um, and so for four or five days a week, he would join me and we would run. Um, I grew up in Missouri, and it was pretty humid during the day. So we would run usually at dusk. Uh, and he yep. just got me doing three to five miles. And honestly, I, I didn't really know what to expect, like going, you know, into high school on the team. Um, but little did I know that like that put me at a huge advantage, uh, starting, uh, as a young runner. So, um, yeah, that, that's my, really where I, I started to realize that like, I, this is something I really liked. Yeah. It's also interesting too the, the, um, the family aspect for you and the fact that just like, it's so cool that your dad sort of not only introed you, but like participated with you. Yes. Yes. And he he really uh, did a great job kind of like following my lead. So, you know, never pushed me, you know, far, further than I wanted to be pushed, um, you know, but at the same time, like knew that, um, you know, this is something that I could be good at and uh, really motivated me, motivated me to get out there. So it, it's really cool. Right. Like, I mean, I comp competed at the same state course that my dad did growing up. So, wow. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. That's cool. So you, you know, you kind of get into high school there, you know, you start, uh, let's call it your, your love for running through your, your mm -hmm. partnership with your dad and that relationship. What was sort of next for you? Let's call it, you know, freshman year, once you got into to high school. Um, you know, honestly, like my freshman year, like ignorance is bliss. <laughs> I think <laughs> is the best way to describe it. Um, right. You know, like I, I just didn't really know what to expect. Um, I kind of went through the fall. Like, I, I think I really lucked out in that the juniors and seniors on the team kind of took me under their wing. Um, you know, I made fast friends with them. And because that's primarily, you know, I was fortunate enough to compete on varsity. Um, and nice. I, 
my very first meet uh, was actually the biggest meet of the season. Um, it, and I, I don't really remember why it happened. I think we had a few meets get canceled and then um, it turned out that like I got 11th out of like 250 girls and I had no idea. I just went out That's and incredible. I did my best. Yeah. And then from there, um, you know, like you're kind of getting used to high school and kind of going through the season. And uh, I think if I remember, I finished sixth at state my freshman year. Um, so again, I, it wasn't really like I had no idea kind of what to expect, but I was lucky that I, you know, had some good mentors. My coach was awesome, had some upperclassmen yeah. help me. And, um, you know, really from there, I started to realize like, oh, I want to, I want to take this seriously. I, I, not that I wasn't already, but that I, I really want, this is, this is my thing. Like, I want to work hard at this right. and do well. Right. That was that kind of moment for you. Yes. Yeah. Where yeah. I realized that like, um, you know, and not only that, like I had, what's great about running is like, you know, natural talent is good, but it, one thing I really appreciate is that like, you really do see, um, your hard work pay off. Um, you know, if you run over the summer or, you know, if you're really, you know, paying attention to how you're training, you'll see results. And those results are entirely, you know, at your, um, you know, you're in complete control of that. Um, and so I thought that was something that was, you know, I hadn't really experienced before with sports. Yeah. And one thing that you said was interesting to me was, you know, you, you kind of had that pre freshman year where you really started to run, let's call it for, for the first time a little bit more seriously and experience with mm -hmm. your dad. And, and then you get into freshman year and then you're on varsity. <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you talked about, um, su supportive coaches cause that, that's a, that's a, that's a big step. You know, a lot of high school players will go through, you know, somewhat of a development process, uh, be it, you know, JV or varsity mm -hmm. and, you know, it might take a year or two to get there. So it sounds like you were kind of thrown in, but you did mention coaches and some of the relationships that you formed with some of your teammates at that point. Um, talk to me a little bit more around the influence that that had. Um, I mean, it was awesome. I, I had a coach who, um, you know, he, he took a very conservative approach when it came to training, which for um, high school girls is exactly where you want to be. So not pushing high mileage, not spending hours in the weight room, um, you know, really just kind of allowing you to experience the sport and, you know, slowly progress over your four years. And so, um, you know, I remember like, uh, you know, begging him to run longer, um, and he wouldn't let me. Uh, <laughs> and so yeah. I think that, you know, it, he, he really knew what he was doing and, um, you know, having a group of girls, I mean, What's also kind of like fun about running is, you know, a lot of our days are recovery days where you're just going out and running, you know, four or five miles and you're just talking with one another. You're supposed to be recovering um, from a workout. And so um, it really like it makes it enjoyable because the last thing that you want with running is for it to feel like you're pulling teeth. Um, yeah. So kind of between a knowledgeable coach that wasn't pushing yeah. me too hard, wasn't putting a lot of pressure on me. Um, and then having companions that like, I really, you know, enjoyed spending, you know, every evening with, um, it just, I couldn't ask for a better introduction to the sport. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's so great to hear the, the positive experience you had because so many times in, in athletics, you, you might hear the opposite about coaches, right? You know, sometimes coaches push too hard and, um, and, and that leads to, you know, a, a tough growth experience for athletes when, you know, they're getting, you know, introduced, growing within their sport, learning. And if you push too much, mm -hmm. Um, that may have the, you know, the, the, the negative side of it, but it's, it's, um, it's great to hear that you had that sort of positive, uh, reinforcing experience, you know, that early on. So, um, let's progress a little bit through high school. So, um, uh, mm -hmm. it sounds like, well, actually, let me say this. I think there's something really interesting about, um, running in the, in the aspect that you've got both the personal side of things and you've got the team side of things. Mm -hmm. So you've kind of got that, you know, duality of, of, of 
competition that's happening. And I feel like it, it happens in other sports, but running has always been really interesting to me where it's like you're, you're competing against yourself, but then you're also competing as part of a team. So yeah. tell me, uh, it sounds like there might've been a little bit of a, uh, a rivalry with, uh, with one of you <laughs> and your, uh, your, your, your teammates, uh, there in high school. Talk to me a little bit about that. Uh, yeah. I mean, like I would say, you know, in the middle of it, it didn't feel like a rivalry. Um, you know, on the outside, yes. Like you're fighting, you know, for first and second. Um, and towards the end, you know, it's a matter of winning a state championship. Um, but I think that, you know, on the flip side to it, I wouldn't have been as good as I was if I didn't have people yeah. pushing me. Um, and so uh, it just so happened that, you know, kind of around like the four years that me and my teammate were running, um, it was honestly probably like the most competitive that Missouri has ever been. Um, like two of the yeah. best runners ever in Missouri were competing with me. Um, and so, wow. um, you know, it pushed all of us. Um, like I remember like we met up with other runners who are, you know, we were competing with uh, during the winter and the summer to do miles, you know, with or do a workout. Um, so even though like, it's kind of something that's out in the back of your head, you know, as you're heading into a race that your biggest competitor is your teammate. Um, on the other hand, um, you know, it really did kind of put you in an environment where, um, you know, I could have an awesome workout with someone who was pushing me, um, you know, at my yeah. home track. Yeah. So how did you guys, you know, I just think like, high school competitiveness, you're still growing as a person, learning as a person, maturing as a person. Yeah. And here, here you guys are, you know, not only competing as teammates, but you're to your point at the upper echelon of, you know, competitors in the state. Like what, take me inside a little bit of that relationship and, and sort of what, what made it work in terms of the competitive side and also, um, mm -hmm. you know, staying friends and, you know, being part of a team? Um, honestly, like it's easier to stay friends and it's way more fun. I think like it took a yeah. lot of emotional maturity from, you know, yeah. um, both of us because I mean, yeah. we had class together, we ran every day together. Um, and so, you know, I think this is the case, no matter what team I've been on, you know, there are people who, you know, maybe like you don't get along with them every day, or maybe you wouldn't be friends outside yeah. of being on the team, or maybe, um, you know, something's going on. Um, it's kind of like siblings, like you, you're with them every day. So you, you, you just have to get along. Um, and so um, yeah. to me, like it never really crossed my Sure, it was in the back of your mind sometimes, you know, in those high stakes moments that, but at the end of the day, yeah. I think like, um, that's kind of, you know, you just kind of realize the value of it, um, too. Right. 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 Well, I, um, when I was doing my, uh, my research for this podcast, I was looking at, um, all of your, uh, <laughs> all of your accolades in high school. Oh so I can't, po I can't possibly go through them all, both, both you and your team, but like, let's leave it as, you know, you guys, um, you know, a ton of amazing success that you had in high school, both individually as a team. I think you guys had the best girls team in Missouri state history. Uh, yeah. I think if you like crunch the numbers and you look at our average time, yeah. that's true. Um, yeah, wow. which is like, it was really cool. Our, also, our boys team won state my senior year too. Um, and we were yeah. pretty close with all of them. So yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. That was a perfect day. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. So you go through kind of the progression of, of your high school career. And I imagine at some, you know, point in time, it's, uh, especially with all of your, you know, individual success, you start thinking about college and colleges, you know, start thinking about you. So walk me through that kind of moment in time in your career when it was like, um, college seemed to be a possibility and mm -hmm. what that was like for you. Um, you know, I really didn't 
consider it, um, I would say seriously until my junior year. Um, one thing that's, I, I really appreciate about running is you don't get recruited the same way you get recruited, say like with soccer or baseball, um, you know, where people are signing their freshman year to go somewhere. Um, and you yeah. can't do that with running. Um, you know, especially, you know, both men and women, you know, are, you're maturing, it drastically impacts your times. Um, and so, uh, you really, you don't sign until the fall of your senior year. And so, um, you know, I would say kind of starting junior year. Um, so my teammate, both her parents ran in college. And so they were very kind of keyed into the recruiting process and how that works. Um, and so, uh, I kind of, you know, from her started to, you know, consider like, is this something that I want to do? And the bottom line was, I thought, well, do I want two years left in this sport or do I want six? Uh, yeah. especially as right. a new, you know, somebody who has just started, it was kind of a no brainer. Right. Right. So after that point, you kind of. I'm assuming had different options in terms of where you wanted to go or where you wanted to run. Like walk me through a little bit how mm -hmm. that aspect of things came to life. Like how did you start thinking about where you wanted to go? I'm mm -hmm. sure again, schools were recruiting you. Yeah. I mean, I would say, um, you know, one, I, I was very fortunate that like, my parents were great at kind of guiding me through the process. Um, I mean, they made it very clear at the end of the day, it was my decision, but they're also people that know me very well. Um, and so I, mostly what I did you know, when I was first starting was um, kind of look at, you know, how far away I want to be from home, um, what I want to study, um, you know, what does the team look like? Um, you know, kind of like your basic things like that. Uh, little did I know what my dad was doing on the other side was looking at <laughs> how many women are on the team, like how much, you know, like coach time are you going to get? Or, um, you know, uh, he would look at how long women are on the team. Is this a team where there aren't that many seniors and people are dropping out? Or is this a team that looks like they're supporting you all four years? Um, right. So I like, I am so thankful that he did that because, um, you know, kind of through like looking at what I wanted academically and then the experience I wanted athletically, we kind of narrowed yeah. it down to some schools in the Big Ten. Um, it just seemed like a pretty good match. Um, and then from there, like, you know, you email coaches, you express your interest, you give them your times. That's another awesome thing about getting recruited with running is that times don't lie. You don't need to like send in any yeah. tape. There's no arguing about how how good you are. Um, I think the one thing I had to like keep reminding people was like Missouri's really hilly. Like, <laughs> so these times on these courses <laughs> right. are yeah, you know, yeah. making you slower. Um, but yeah, <laughs> those are kind of you know the main things on my mind. Like when I was starting to look at colleges. Yeah, that's that's such an interesting point too. It's like. It, there, there is no question, right? It is, it is a time, you know, it's so, it's so mm -hmm. finite. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah, I always appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sure that's good sometimes and, and tougher sometimes, but it's what it is, right? <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. Okay. So at some point you kind of make the decision that you're going to go to Northwestern, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, Tell me a little bit about like, were you look, did you kind of have a couple final schools? Was it Northwestern all the way? Was it Northwestern and maybe a couple others that were on the, 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 mm -hmm. the top of the list? Yep. I went on, so I went on three official visits, you know, where you go, you stay overnight, meet the team. Right. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, I think one thing that you know, looking back, it's, I'm always really surprised that, you know, as an 18 year old, you have to make this decision because it is hard. You go to yeah. somewhere and like, they have like all this amazing gear and they have this, these amazing facilities and, um, you know, like you're really kind of, you're, you're really focusing on the athletic side and you're kind of forgetting that, like, I'm going to school to go to college. Um, yeah. And so I think that, you know, 
that's one thing that I really tried to keep in mind as I was choosing a school. And so, I mean, the re- main reasons why I picked Northwestern was like, I didn't feel like I was compromising on either that I was able to, yeah. I mean, go to like a top 10 institution um, in the country. They, you know, are right next to Chicago. I thought that was awesome. You're right by beautiful Lake Michigan. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, on paper, Northwestern doesn't look, I think, as attractive, you know, to some runners. Um, but when you take a deeper look, so for example, they don't have a track track team, uh, which kind of surprised me okay. at first. Um, but on the flip side, that means that, you know, you are sharing attention with 20 other women instead of 100 or, you know, you know, basically an, an entirely, you know, additional team. Um, we got to go yeah. to distance only focused meets. So like we would, well, everyone else was going south um, to, you know, go to meets that cater better to sprinters. We were going to California and getting to run, you know, these like twilight 5Ks nice. uh, and get really good times. Um, so it was kind of like things like that, knowing that like I would be happy there even if I got injured and that I had coaches who cared about how I did academically and how I was as a person. Um, you know, we had an, a dedicated athletic trainer, um, who was there for us. It was kind of, you know, a co- combination of all those things that, um, really is what made me decide to choose Northwestern. Yeah. And I, I'm sensing a theme here and, uh, I'm giving it away cause I do know you a little bit, uh, outside of the podcast, <laughs> but you know, just, just the, just the maturity level, you know, to, to, you know, when you're an 18 year old or, or close to 18 year old athlete and going to college, like, like you were saying there, there's a lot of external things that are, you know, that, that you may lose sight of a little bit, the, the bigger picture of, you know, why, yeah. why am I going to college? I'm going to, you know, get a degree. I'm, I'm, I'm going to grow. Like there's so many other aspects of it. And I feel like you had, you had that sense and that maturity at the time to at least know um, this holistically is the right place for me. And and what I would say is I think what you, you hear a lot of the stories about the athletes who pick a college or university based off of the sport. And if it doesn't work out, then they don't really have sort of that, that, all other aspects that the university brings. So anyway, I just, just kudos to you for at that point, really, you know, like having that kind of vision to understand that this is more than just about, about Mm -hmm. the sport. Yeah, no, I mean, like, uh, you know, bottom line, I remember my dad saying that, like, look, you know, running is awesome. You know, it's super fun. It's, you know, helping you get, you know, go to a college you want, get scholarship, but at the end of the day, you're going to run there for four years and then you're going to care about your career. You know, your parents will care about your career, your coach, some close friends. But after that, like it's over and you're left with a degree and you know what you did there athletically and um, that's the rest of your life. And so I think it just really put it into perspective that, um, you know, at the end of the day, like it's a gift that we get to do it, but um, you know, there's so much more in life and, you know, yeah, that's kind of, yeah. Something that really stuck with me. Yeah. So I, I promise I don't want to derail us too much, but you've mentioned your dad quite a bit. And, you know, one of the things I think as athletes uh, and people are the influences that coaches, parents, have on our life. And, and it's like from the day that your dad started running with you, um, you know, even through your, what you're talking about, the perspective of college, like what influence did he have on you? Um, you know, I think that, um, he really just like, he did a really great job, like guiding without pushing. Um, and I think that, um, you know, that really kind of gave me a very strong sense of perspective through it all that, um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, even though, even when like my freshman year in college, I was really stressed that like, 
it's something I get to do. And, um, you know, I get all these really cool opportunities from it. Um, and so I think even now, like, that's something that, um, you know, he's kind of helped me hone that skill, like throughout my life. Yeah. Yeah. I love that guy guide, but not push. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, which like, uh, with running, especially like when you're starting and like with kids too, like it's really important. Yeah. Like you're, you're not going to make any kid run. <laughs> you just can't. Right. Um, it has to be something that they want to do. And so, you know, I'm sure my dad thought like, well, like Sarah might be good at cross country, but you know, until I was ready to do it and own it, you know, um, you know, I got to explore other sports and other passions, which was awesome. Yeah. It's so interesting too, because it's like, it's, it's that, it's that metaphor of like running, you know, but also life, you know, that, that yeah. guiding and pushing, <laughs> which I think is, uh, I think is very, very appropriate. So, yeah. um, kind of bringing us back a little bit to, mm -hmm. to where we were in your story of, you, you know, you're at, uh, Northwestern. So you've made your decision. You're now at Northwestern. Um, you know, it's kind of your freshman year, um, you know, a lot of what we talk about on this podcast is, is transitions, um, mm -hmm. including, you know, life after sport, but this is a big transition. So you go from, you know, big time Missouri state, you know, Missouri high school athlete, and you're now at a D one, you know, competitive school. Re go back to that moment, you know, the first practice, <laughs> the first meet, like yeah. what's happening and what are you thinking? Um, again, ignorance is bliss. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember, you know, getting on campus and, um, you know, uh, what's kind of nice about Northwestern is since we're on the quarter system, um, we have preseason for a long time. The school doesn't start until the end of September. And so I had an entire, yeah. you know, almost two months to become friends with my teammates, get to know the campus. Um, right. We had practice all through those couple months. And so um, that was, that was huge. Um, uh, so actually my teammate uh, and I um, were the number one and two runner on the team. Um, and so nice. um, just kind of going in, like competing at a D1 level, but then like also kind of, even though like you're not a leader in terms of like, you know, like being a captain, like you're still a leader in, in terms of like competition. Um, it's kind of a tough thing to juggle. Um, yeah. but having like another freshman with me to do it, um, it, it helped a lot. Yeah. What did you learn about leadership from that? Um, that, I mean, really, um, kind of just like leading by example, I think is a really powerful way to lead. Um, especially when it comes to a sport like cross country where, um, it really is a lifestyle, you know, you're making it, the 23 hours that you're not running. Um, those are things that are impacting your performance. And so even though I wasn't a senior on the team, um, you know, I, it's kind of like, if you're all making the, you know, doing, making the decision, you know, to live this lifestyle and to make these choices, um, it's that solidarity that kind of pushes other people to do the same thing. Yeah. Leading by example. Love it. So when you kind of look at, let's call it the, the, the body of your, your Northwestern career, you know, over, over those years, what would you say, um, what areas did you find the, the most growth in? What experiences did you go through, which, which led you to the most growth? Wow. Um, um, I would say one is definitely stress management <laughs> and, yeah. um, yeah, like, man, Northwestern's hard. Uh, like, especially your first couple of years, you know, you're getting used to the yeah. quarter system. You're getting used to your classes. Um, yeah. especially with running, you're competing all three quarters. Um, so you don't really get a break, you know, for a quarter, you're traveling, you're competing. Um, and so it really is kind of a sprint, you know, for every 10 weeks and you, you know, go home for spring break or whatever, and you come back and you do it again. Um, and so 
a big thing. And two, like stress impacts your performance, of course. The more stressed you are, you know, you get sick, you don't run as well. Um, and so, you know, really kind of learning not to sweat the small stuff. Like I didn't yeah. really learn that until my senior year. I, th- I felt like I finally got it. Uh, like, you know, like during like indoor track my senior year. Um, so just kind of crazy, you know, how long it can take to learn that. So that was a huge yeah. lesson. Um, yeah, that's probably one of the biggest ones that I learned there. Yeah. What was, um, when you say sweat the small stuff, what were the things you were sweating? What were the small stuff? Oh my gosh. Like, um, you know, it could be like anything. It could be, um, my group wants to meet at 9 p.m. and that's my bedtime. <laughs> yeah. Or, um, oh no, I don't have any clean clothes. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, uh, I'm trying to think of like other things, even just like, you know, someone asked me to hang out and I'm really tired. Like, what do I do? I don't want to let them down. Or, yeah. um, you know, I, I learned pretty quickly that like, you can't do all the readings that they assign. You just can't, you yeah. have to like pick and choose. You have to prioritize. Um, so yeah, stuff like that. I mean, like you're yeah. kind of figuring out how to be an adult, like, and right. so, um, yeah, picking all of that up and just kind of learning when to let stuff go or, you know, that it doesn't have, to, not everything has to be perfect. Uh, I think was right. a big thing. Yeah. What, what, um, helped you shift your mindset? Um, I think, you know, one thing that, uh, my coach did my senior year was we started meditating. We started doing yoga Mm. twice a week. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I'd done yoga in the past, but, um, really kind of taking the time to practice, like not thinking of things, you know, like really being still focusing on your body, um, that was a huge tool, like kind of treating your brain mm. like a muscle and that you have to practice, um, you know, kind of shutting everything down, um, especially, yeah. the, you know, during the week, it was just going, you know, from door to door, um, you yeah. know, moving and, you know, being really busy. And so creating the space to do that was really important. Yeah. Great. So, um, it sounds like injuries might have been another kind of, um, I guess, piece that you had to work through and had to, had to grow Mm -hmm. beyond, let's call it, or or grow through, um, in your, in your collegiate career there. Um, what, what, uh, what were your experiences there? Um, you know, I would, I would say I was pretty lucky. I, I really only got injured a couple of times. Um, and, you know, it's hard. You're competitive. You have a limited amount of time. I, I knew pretty much like I wasn't going to do a fifth year that, um, yeah. you know, that that wasn't something I was interested in. And so, um, yeah, it can really kind of you just all of a sudden, like, you, it's just kind of a total life disruptor. Like, you don't realize that, like, my like a lot of my social life falls like within practice and I'm not going to yeah. practice anymore. I'm biking by myself. Um, right. or, you know, you take a lot of pride in how fit you are and like how, uh, you know, you're able to perform. And then all of a sudden workouts are so much harder when you come back, um, when you have to start slowly. So, I mean, it's definitely something that, uh, you know, pretty much every runner goes through. Um, but I think especially like at the collegiate level, um, you know, it's kind of hard to, you know, figure out like how to get your mindset right in order to get through it. Um, honestly, like what helped me the most was just getting into other hobbies. I think that's something that a lot of athletes fall into mm. is you put all your weight into your sport and then you get injured and then there's nothing else really to keep you going and keep you happy and motivated. And so all of a sudden, like school starts to suffer or, you know, you just kind of spiral yeah. from there. Yeah. So, so what were some of those things that you, you found that, that helped you, you know, let's call it other hobbies? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, so I, I played piano growing up, so, uh, I got a keyboard that helped. Um, nice. I, um, you know, made friendships and developed those. Um, yeah. 
So I spent more time with friends. Um, I mean, Evanston's right down the street from Chicago. So I spent more time doing that. Um, So, yeah, just kind of trying to find other things that, um, you know, kind of like gave me life. Right. Right. And it's like that, that, um, you know, we'll, we'll kind of get to your, your transition moment here out of Northwestern, but Mm -hmm. it sounds like there was at least a part of you that was, was thinking that way. Like what, what what else beyond? Yeah. Like what else beyond running, like helped me through it or yeah. Um, well, just, you know, just in terms of, yeah. Go ahead. Hmm? <laughs> um, I, I, was I just think, say, it, go, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would say like, well, one thing that was kind of hard and that, you know, I, I think a lot of people do like go through this is that like in high school, I didn't just run. I, uh, I took piano lessons once a week. Uh, I was in the orchestra. I played cello. Um, you know, you're living at home. You have a family. You know, that's like you know, that's another like way to be social. Um, and then all of a sudden, you go to college, and like I stopped doing that stuff. Um, and so you don't realize that you really miss it. Um, yeah. So I think it took me a while, but trying to be conscious of like what like even though like at the time I was in my tiny dorm and had no room to get a piano like how can I fill that need like I started like um listening to music more often or drawing like it's really hard when you're on a college campus because you don't have access to these (laughs) things anymore or you don't have time anymore because like you're now (laughs) like doubling your workload for sport um but yeah like I really tried to get to the root of like okay well what did I get out of this and how can I figure out how to do it in a different way yeah yeah so you you're sort of let's call it moving on you're you're in your senior year and you are one of i would say you know uh good probably good or bad depends on how you look at it but like one of the few groups of athletes that went through covid as a collegiate athlete and so mm-hmm. I know, I think your senior year kind of came a little bit more to an abrupt end than perhaps expected. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, uh, you know, I remember like, uh, we were supposed to go to Raleigh. Uh, I was supposed to do my first 10 K of the season. Like I was in really, really good shape. I was super excited. Like I thought I'd be able to like punch my ticket and go to regionals. And um, they decided that they were going to extend spring break by a couple weeks. Then that like the next day I was at practice, we were in the training room and like someone got a tweet that like the NCAA canceled the season. Um, And so, yeah, it was it was quite a shock. And, you know, I was I was sad. Uh, You know, you just it's just not how you, you know, envision your career ending, Um, because at that point, like I knew it was over. And so, yeah, within two days, we, um, you know, my boyfriend and I headed to St. Louis with my family and, uh, it was weird. (laughs) Wow. So I have to, I I have to ask, like, bring me back to that room where I'm assuming you were with all of your teammates. Someone to your point gets the tweet, like what, what is, what is happening at that point? Like, what is what are people saying? What are people feeling? Oh I mean, God. I just, that's such a, <laughs> yeah. I just feel like that's such a powerful moment. Uh, I mean, the first thing I thought was like, my trainer was like working on my calf and I was like, I guess she wants to work on my calf anymore. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was really weird. I mean, uh, like, uh, and it was, the other thing that was really also weird was like, I was, so I, I was one of four in my class and, um, one of them had already graduated. So she was done. She, she wasn't even at practice. Um, and then the other two had planned on doing fifth years. So it wasn't the end of their career. So I was Uh, the only one in the room where that was it. Um, wow. So it was, yeah, it was sad. Um, I think, we we all decided that we were just gonna go and do practice. So we we all went yeah. and went on a seven mile run and 
you know, I think we were just kind of in shock. Um, and yeah, I, I think we, we were all just kind of like figuring out too, like, cause at that point, like we finals were coming up in two weeks. I was trying to think about like when I was going to go home. Um, so honestly, like the fact that we ran, I think it kind of helped like get some of the feelings out, um, and like being with my team, but yeah, the whole, the whole, like the reality was weird. Um, everyone was just really quiet and like, I mean, didn't really know what to say. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So, you know, a lot of times with, you know, let's, let's say that the, the transition or, you know, going into, you know, retirement, so to speak, you know, it differs for every athlete, meaning, Mm -hmm. you know, when does it really kind of hit you? Uh, you know, some, some athletes, you know, it it can be right away, right? Like you start to feel the loss of your sport. Some athletes, it's like, I'm glad I'm done. And then, you know, six months, a year later, it's, it's like, oh, wow. I, you know, now, you know, it's, I'm starting to feel it, you know, I'm starting to feel what it's like not to be in this, but sort of the mental and physical challenges around it. So, um, I, I, I'm curious, you know, like my mind goes to, you know, was COVID and that moment where you were in, you know, with all of your teammates and you learned, like, did it, did it process then? Or what was your moment when it really set in? Yeah. Um, so mine was kind of slow because, um, you know, at that point we really didn't kind of know how long it was going to last. And so I talked to my coach a little bit and we were both like, you know, I still had spring quarter to do. And, um, I felt like I was in a really, really good spot fitness wise. And I didn't want that to go to waste. And so we both agreed, like, you know, there might be a 10 K on the horizon in like June or something like, if you mm-hmm. want to still train, like, why not? Um, but, you know, p- the emotions of COVID and like, you know, right. what, going through the pandemic and then also like not being able to like have your normal season anymore, coupled with like, you know, running by yourself um, within like, you know, probably not even a month. I realized like, this isn't fun. It isn't sustainable. I I want to let go. And so I think what one thing that's kind of interesting about my situation was like, even though um, like running for Northwestern had like ended very abruptly. Um, what One thing I kind of appreciated about my experience was like, I got to let go on my own terms. I remember like, I mm. called my coach and I was just like, I'm not feeling good. Like, this isn't fun. And she just said like, what if you just stopped? Um, and we kind of talked about like, yeah. you know, what that would look like and that that's okay. Um, and, you know, she gave me some really good advice, just basically saying that like, when you're in college, especially competing, your life kind of looks like this. Like you've got, you know, you're putting in a ton of ton of time and effort on running uh, and energy. And so other things go on the wayside a bit more. Like, you know, I loved music and playing music. Like, um, sometimes like your friendships, your relationships, sacri- you know, are sacrificed, um, or I shouldn't say sacrificed, but like, you know, put on the back burner. And so she's like, it's time for you to balance your life into other things, um, which yeah. helped a lot. It started to kind of, instead of looking at like saying goodbye to running, it was more like, well, what doors do I want to open? What things do I want to revisit? So we kind of ended the phone call that way. And, um, I went in and my parents and I cheers with some wine and yeah. Um, yeah, that kind of marked the end. Yeah. It's, it sounds like, um, you had such great experiences with, um, with at least the two coaches that we've talked about, you know, your, your high school coach in terms of, you know, how they, uh, thought about things at, at that phase of your career. And then you've got a, you know, a coach here at the end of your Northwestern career, who's, providing some really important perspective. So what a, what a gift to have, you know, coaches that were so influential. Yes. Um, I mean, these are people that you're spending every day with, um, and they really do make a lasting impact on you. So, I mean, the fact that I had two incredibly inspiring and strong women, you know, that I got coached by in college, 
and that I had such a, you know, experienced and smart and kind, um, you know, coach in high school kind of lay that groundwork. Um, Yeah, I, I mean, I couldn't be more thankful. Yeah. That's great. So you, you, uh, you, you have that nice cheers with your parents <laughs> after that, that phone call <laughs> wah, with your wah. coach. Um, <laughs> wah, wah. Um, but what, what, what came next for you? Like what, um, what sort of experiences did you have, uh, with your transition, uh, mm-hmm. after that moment in time? Um, so I still ran, um, every day. Uh, and I feel like I did this and it was very painful looking back and I probably shouldn't have, (laughs) but, um, and this is what kind of hard about running is like, you know, if you played like football or something, you're not playing football anymore. Like you're, you're not doing that every day, but running you can. Uh, so what ended up happening for me is over the span of your year, you know, you start running slower and shorter and you don't feel as good. Uh, and so you know, I still enjoyed running, but, um, it's not fun to see your fitness just complete, you know, slowly decrease over time. Um, I think that, uh, I probably would have done it differently if I got to do it again. What would you have done differently? Um, I think that I would have, um, you know, it's hard. Like on one hand, like, you kind of have to either run or not run. Like you, it's hard to like do it halfway because then you're just kind of not in shape enough to enjoy it. Um, But on the other hand, it's a huge outlet for me. It's something that like really was good for me physically and mentally. Um, And so um, I think honestly, like it it took me up until last summer to finally, like I, I wasn't enjoying running anymore. I was tired. Um, I had gotten COVID in July and like, I just stopped. I finally had the courage to stop um, and explore yep. other ways to exercise. Um, I started lifting weights mm-hmm. and doing yoga and walking and rollerblading. Yeah. Um, and now like I still run, I run like three, two, two to four times a week and I can do that. Um, and I feel good about it, but it took a long time to have the courage to finally let go. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things that happens a lot with, with athletes going through the transition is the mindset of if I'm not in your case running at the Mm -hmm. same level, the same fitness that I was when I was a college athlete or high school athlete, like it, it's like a failure. (laughs) It's like, so there's this really high standard that, you know, we, we put on ourselves when we come out of college and that's really hard to maintain. Yes. I think that like, I didn't realize how much self-confidence I got from being in the best shape of my life. Um, and like, it's just something that isn't sustainable. Like by my senior year, like I was doing 70 miles a week, like training for three hours a day. Like if you count, like from the day, you know, the time I walked into the training room to when I left, um, it's time consuming and you can't do that anymore. Um, and so I think I had to kind of reframe what, what I wanted to get out of running. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. It was like the, the reframe going to, other activities like there's something so interesting about giving yourself permission to explore (laughs) you know it's like yeah you've been so trained in a certain mindset that that's all there it's all you feel like you know and then it's like you you open that aperture and all of a sudden it's like like you said i can lift i can do yoga i i'll rollerblade and so Mm -hmm. Once you started to do some of those other things, what, what did that, what did that do in terms of like your transition? I think to me, like it, I finally felt like I, I could work out in a way that made me happy, but also in a way that like, I felt good, like physically. I think one thing that's hard with athletes is that like, 
you've never exercised like just to be healthy or like to stay in shape. (laughs) It's like, (laughs) and so it's really hard (laughs) like to, I think to me, I was like worried, you know, like I'm going to be out of shape if I stop running or, um, you know, my body's going to change in a way that I don't want it to. Um, and running was like the only way I knew how to exercise. Um, and so what happened was like when I stopped running consistently like I stopped cold turkey for like three months um Mm -hmm. like I noticed I could scratch the itch that I got from running by doing other things so like I never really lifted weights before um and so like it was awesome like I got to see myself improve really quickly um same with like yoga something entirely different than running you're doing everything so slow But like, I still like, I felt good to feel challenged um, still. And that like, you could, again, see progress happening. Um, And so to me, it just taught me like, there's no one way to exercise. And at the end of the day that like, um, you know, I can kind of like work out, like, I enjoy movement. That's not an issue. Uh, And so I can kind of get to work out how I, however I feel like working out and that, um, you know, I can be happy that way. Yeah. I also think it was interesting how w- once you got to that point, you also mentioned that like you, you were able to go back to running at, um, you know, uh, you know, whether it was two to three days a week, like it was almost like you were now comfortable with, mm-hmm. w- with that aspect of things. So it was, it was exploring and finding new, but it was also interesting to hear you say like, And then I figured out how running was still going to play a role in the right and healthy way for me. Yeah, definitely. And like, it was something as simple as like running without a watch or running for time instead of mileage, um, just completely changing the agenda of the run. Um, like now I'll like, not like my heart rate, like cannot go over 170. Like I, like that is the goal of the run. Um, and so it just kind of like it it puts you far enough away from the mindset that you were in in college that uh it made it it made it different enough for me to like not feel that like urge to you know not that I'm like I'm not good enough um and you know some days I surprise myself that I'll start a run and I'll feel good and like I want to kill it like let's go <laughs> um <laughs> but now it's just That's like, where that competitor kicks in yeah (laughs) yes but at the same time it's not like I have to like go out and like kill it because I'm out of shape and I need it yeah so it's it's something you know um, it takes courage and you've got to explore a little bit right it's almost like I'm sensing like uh it's on your terms Mm mm-hmm yeah and uh, I think it took me longer than I thought it would um I remember my senior year, I went to, I think it was like maybe a couple of weeks before my last cross country race. And uh, I went to a sports psychologist that like Northwestern, um, we're lucky enough to have one, you know, available to us. And, um, you know, I said, Hey, like, I, I, I know like transitioning is hard for some people, you know, uh, so I'm here. And like, yeah. she's like, well, what do you want to talk about? I was like, I don't know. I haven't finished yet. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just kind of realized that like, you know, until you're there, you don't really realize like what's going to happen. And honestly, like the biggest surprise to me was just like, I didn't know what to expect, like how I would feel after I finished, um, you know, yeah. uh, how long it would take me to kind of, I mean, like I'm three years out now. And like, I feel like up until about a year ago, um, you know, it was hard. There was, there's a grieving process. Yeah. Yeah. And so when you, when you had that discussion with the sports psychologist, what, what came about from that? Um, you know, I think that honestly, nothing really like I, uh, Mm -hmm. I feel like I wasn't, I wasn't ready to be honest with myself about Uh. like, yeah, I, I think I emotionally, um, even that, like, I thought I was being really proactive, you know, and like, but even like, the act of going to a sports psychologist was hard for me. Um, and so, again, it took me like, you know, a good amount of time to come to terms with like, 
what I was actually struggling with, um, with like this transition. Um, I started seeing a therapist like, um, uh, like maybe a year and six months after, um, like COVID hit and I stopped running in college. Um, and that was when, like, I finally, like, you know, was brave enough to like put in the work and figure out yeah. like what I wanted to do. Yeah. And what was, what were your, um, I don't know, like what were some of the, the, the bigger breakthrough moments for you when you were, you know, going through that therapy? Like what, what were some of those moments where you're just, you, you felt like you were, you were, you were making a difference. You were, you were moving mm -hmm. forward. So definitely like stopping running was a big one. Um, being able to yeah. let go, explore other things. Um, another really big one was like, I remember one time my therapist asked me to describe myself. Um, and so I started out saying like, well, like this is where I work. This is what I do. Like I live here. <laughs> I grew up here. And uh, she was like, no, 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 like, who are you? And I like, it was really hard to answer. Uh, I think that for the longest time, like, if you ask me who I was, like, I ran across country and track, I go to Northwestern, like, I grew up in St. Louis. Um, instead of being like, I'm funny and competitive and driven, being able to describe yourself based off of like, who you are, and not like what you've accomplished or what you do. Um, I mean, I think that's a, hard for a lot of people, like as they transition into adulthood, but getting my self worth from who I am versus what I do was hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 um, that identity piece is, is a really, you know, I think big aspect of it and, you know, every athlete is different and unique and, you know, really taking a moment to step back. And it's like how it, it's so interesting how like one powerful question like that completely reframed yeah. how you were thinking and looking at things. 100%. And two, like, you know, being a like college athlete, like you're used to getting a lot of validation from other people based off of how you've performed. Um, and when you transition into adulthood, you are in your driver's seat, you're choosing where you want to live and where you want to work and what you want to do and how you want to spend your free time. And like, all of a sudden, like your happiness, it, it just becomes very clear that you are in charge of making yourself happy and um, that that's where it comes from is you. Yeah. So when you were. Um at that point where maybe you were sort of like, Hey, I might need help. You know, mm -hmm. I might need help outside of myself, you know, for, for those that are listening, maybe walk through that, that process in your mind. What was it, was it sort of, I'm going to go to therapy. Was there thoughts around, do I need to, do I not need to like, what, what was your experience leading to that? Um, I feel like um, I knew there was some unfinished work in terms of like, I felt like it was hard to talk to people about transitioning because I feel like as athletes, like you're taught to be tough. And I also felt like it was kind of a stupid problem to have that like, I mean, there was an entire pandemic going on uh, that like people have real problems and here I am like grieving my career or like, I, like, you know, grieving this thing that I had in my life that's not there anymore. That was giving me a lot that I needed. And yeah. now I don't have it. And on top of it, I'm, you know, stuck in my apartment in Chicago, starting a job where I've never met anybody right. in person. Right. And um, so I feel like that was a big thing. Um, I also had a really hard time admitting to myself that like, um, you know, this is unfortunately common with a lot of women in sport that, you know, your relationship with food and fueling that you know, your body image that there was work I needed to do there. Um, and that like, it was still impacting me, even though I wasn't competitively running anymore. And so right. I kind of between those two things, like, I finally decided that like, 
I, I just wanted somebody to talk to that, like, um, you know, really had like experience in the area and that, um, you know, was completely neutral. Um, yeah. and that I didn't have to feel bad about for talking to. Yeah. It, it's so interesting to the, the, um, the piece you said about neutral because, you know, so much of being an athlete and going through those experiences, it's, it's just, you're always getting opinions. You're, you're always kind of, everyone has got an agenda and I don't mean that in, in a negative way, an agenda can be a, a, a positive thing, but a lot of times like what you're experiencing through, you know, being a competitive athlete is, you know, uh, someone who's got, you know, a coach, right? Like they care about you, but it's also about performance. It's also about, mm -hmm. you know, how, you know, they're growing the team and, and how they're, you know, uh, you know, competing and, and, and all that other stuff and what success looks like. And so to be able to sit down with someone who is so out of that world in some cases, you know, and mm -hmm. just be able to, to really, provide that perspective that is, is it's, it's, it's new, it's, it's different. And I think that's, you know, for, for any athletes who are transitioning, listening, it's, I think that can be a powerful thing. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, even if you have like the best support system in the world, um, having someone who doesn't, you know, hasn't gone through all these things with you and kind of knew you as an athlete. Yeah. Um, you're right. It does provide an entirely different perspective. I mean, obviously if my parents, you know, had been through the whole journey on me with me. I, yeah. um, I met my fiance in college, like he, you know, he, and he is a runner too. So like, he kind of, he knew it, he understood it. Um, I, I kind of needed yeah. someone who didn't know anything about running. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. and even though they were very, you know, extremely supportive too, like you sometimes like you feel bad. Um, you know, kind of unloading all of this. Mm. Tell me more about that. Um, you know, just that, like, uh, it, and again, like, it's nothing, you know, like, I would say, like, the people who I relied on, like, did an amazing job listening and were super supportive. Um, but, like, I, I needed a different perspective. And I also, like, like I said, like, I felt, bad complaining about this a year after I graduated um yeah you know it's you feel like you should be yeah. Uh, yeah I felt like I should be over it at that point um yeah but again like I hadn't because I had never really grieved in the first place and I had shoved all my feelings down right. uh right. It, it was still waiting for me I still had work to do so yeah. it really was kind the, of the like guilt? A, it was a me problem <laughs> <laughs> No, but I think, I think it's, it's, uh, th that guilt piece is real, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's like, and, and what, what you were saying earlier around, okay, you know, take any athlete, you know, at, at any other point in, in time. And that is a, you know, a grieving process, as you said, it's, um, you know, it's really difficult and there, there is that guilt. And then here you are amidst a global pandemic where you want to talk about life perspective. And I, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like, you know, athletes like yourself who went through that transition during that time, it was almost like a double whammy because you, you had to, you had to deal with that guilt. Yeah. And then it was like, oh man, you know, who, who am I even more now amongst, you know, people are, are mm -hmm. dying, you know, amongst the global yeah. pandemic and, and here am I, you know, saying, you know, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm sad because I'm, I'm, you know, moving away from my sport. Right. Yeah. It's, it's weird. <laughs> and then, you know, too, I think like everyone's experience is different. And so, you know, I, you have teammates that maybe don't cope the same way that you do, or, you know, maybe they went and did a fifth year and they're not at that stage yet. Um, yeah. you know, it's really hard, I think, to find someone you're, or I should say, you're not going to find someone who is having the same experience as you. And so, um, you know, I did right. connect with, you know, teammates, um, you know, and talk to them, which like was a help. But again, like, it was kind of more about like, the inner healing of like, 
figuring out what I want to do and like how I feel yeah. about it. Um, and having someone kind of push me to explore the feelings, uh, as someone who like, I'm not super emotional and I like have a hard time doing that. So having like, you know, yeah. going to therapy kind of helps put me in an environment where I got to be pushed where I needed to be pushed. Yeah. Right. So, um, what would you say, you know, there's, and I, I think you've kind of, uh, mentioned a few things in here, you know, specific to running, but, you know, for those who are listening that, um, are runners, what mm -hmm. might you offer up for them with that runner mindset as it relates to this transition from your experience? Um, you know, like I said, I think that running is hard to transition from because you're still able to do it. Um, and so, you know, to me, like really asking myself, like what I want out of my relationship with running is really important. Um, and also just kind of giving yourself like some slack that it, yeah, it might be, you know, a good year or two or more before you really feel like you've, um, you know, kind of like got obtained peace, you know, with your relationship. Like I've known some runners who stopped cold Turkey, swore up and down, they'd never run again. And, you know, they just signed up for a race like, uh, <laughs> that, you know, your journey can really be in any direction and that, um, you know, it's just important to be patient with yourself, but yes, to really kind of set aside the competitive aspect for a moment and think about like, why do you like running in the first place and try to honor that when yeah. you're on running, when you're on runs instead of looking at your watch. Yeah. Well, Sarah, uh, uh, speaking of journey, um, thank you for taking the time to, you know, share your story and your journey. I think, it's going to help a lot of people and I appreciate your, uh, your time and your honesty and your transparency. Um, and just thank you again. Of course. Yeah. I, uh, for anybody out there, like you're, you can do it and, um, you know, uh, you end up at the other side, really, I think feeling at peace and grateful with your journey. So, um, yeah, happy to come on and tell my story. Awesome. Thanks again, Sarah. Yep. See you, Kyle. Hey, everyone. It's Kyle. Thanks so much for listening. I truly believe that every story can make a difference for this next generation of retiring athletes. If you enjoyed the episode, uh, don't forget to hit subscribe if you're watching on YouTube or give us a follow if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Thanks.